So what we're gonna be doing today is determining how we're gonna plant the garlic, how far apart we're gonna keep the garlic. But the biggest thing for here, us here at Starkey Farmstead is, we are no-till, but we're only six months into no-till. So I'm not gonna be able to have this beautiful soil that you see on some of the, the YouTube videos where I can just take a shovel and create a trench, put my garlic or my onion, and then cover that back up, pat it down, put my mulch back, and be like, bam, Sam nailed it. It's not gonna work like that here at Starkey Farmstead. What we're gonna have to do here is separate the deep mulch, which is a trash hay, back so that I can get a drill. Let me see that drill, baby. Okay, so, fine. my husband's gonna demonstrate for us. A foot. Between each of the three? Ro the three? Yeah. Okay, we can do that. Hi guys, welcome back to Storky Farmstead. Today is, let's get garlic into a no-till, first year no-till garden. So we can get this drill into this hard pack. Do you see how hard that is? This is why we chose not to till. But guys, even a bulb, uh, I think it's a, a six inch bulb puncher will not work in our soil in places. I'm super excited. It has amended a lot. I mean, um, it has, hasn't it, Stephen? Oh, yeah. It has amended a lot, and I am a believer in the no-till, but I'm going to tell you, this little doodally my husband is using right here will save you hours depending on how far along you are in your journey for no-till. When you're watching people's videos, the biggest thing to look for is what stage of no-till are they in? If they're no-till in raised beds, their, their soil is going to be different. If they are on a sandy soil, their soil is going to be different. If they're on hard-packed Louisiana red clay, like we are, literally, this is, this is outside of my no-till. There's my no-till. This is what we started on. And yeah, watch. He'll show you how hard this is. all red clay yeah it's just red clay so it's real important to Stephen and I to to steward this land properly but you have to work within your means guys and I'm not out here to kill myself I literally have 500 cloves of garlic to get into this this 100 foot row so you'll notice here all right he put the string line down so the middle hole is going to go directly below the string line one two inches to the left one, two inches to the right. Three, three, four inches to the right and left. Yeah, well, that's fine. Three or four inches, as long as it has time, you know, space to grow a healthy bulb. So we're going to do that all the way up. We opted not, guys, listen to me carefully. We opted not to take from here and drag all the mulch back. Let me show you why. Real quick, let's walk across the garden. I know you're busy. I appreciate you being here. Here's what happened... When my dad and I did it, okay, where this is, where the drip line is, is where the food is. See the food standing up down there? We separated all the hay back all the way down the 100 foot row, put the plants in. Look where the grass really came in at, where we separated the hay. Even though we put it back, we did put it back. That is where the most of the breakthrough came. In places like the center of the aisle, where we never disturbed the hay, after laying it as a thick mulch, that area looks amazing, okay? Just something for you to think about. Really think through how are you gonna move back your mulch, how much of you are, how much of it are you going to move back, okay? And you can tell this has been tarped for a while. It's ready to go. I'd really like it not to be full of grass a month from now. So the best way for us to do it is the way Steven's doing it right now. If you get that hay too close to your drill, you will have a problem. Oh, yeah. We'll get tangled up. You don't have to get crazy with the drill, okay? In our case, if we didn't use the drill, we would have to have a shovel. The bulb puncher will not go through our soil at this point.
All right, see? See how the hay got on it? All right. I think it should be a pain, but it's part of life. Amen. All right, so today we're going to be putting in the ground garlic. Now, something Stephen and I had to learn. You want to break up the bulb when you get it into individual cloves. This is the fat end. This is the pointy end. Leave this husk on there, guys. It's a protective husk. It's part of the seed. This part goes down. This part stays up. Here's another one for another example. Up, down, okay? Like this. Hold on, let me show you one thing. This would be the better way to show it. That one's already got a sprout. Oh yeah, this one's already sprouted. All right, so you see what we're talking about? Look at that, that's where your, your um, roots are gonna come out of. This is where your plant is going to grow, okay? So that's how you want it to go in. Now with this one, I will only bury it to about right here, all right? These, I need to go in the ground at least two inches with. Now, this is how Stephen and I are going to do it because we are no-till. You guys have probably seen our other videos on how we actually make our compost in our rack and pin chicken coop. And this is where all this came out of. And it is beautiful, guys. It is so beautiful. So, I'm going to go ahead. This is the compost I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is every one of these holes that Stephen was nice enough to come out here and drill for me, they go about four inches down, so I'm going to fill them in. Now, I'm doing this all nice and neat for you guys so that you can actually see, but when we get to working, it's going to go a lot faster than this. I'm just going to fill those holes in, make sure that compost gets down into that dirt. All right, and then in between the holes, I'm going to put a nice covering of compost and let me explain to you why. Steven and I will not put the hay mulch back like this until we see green sprouts coming out of the ground. All right. This will keep the grass from growing if it's thick enough. If you get it in a thick enough layer between the ground and up. Now guys, here's a kicker. Me and Steven were talking about this. Compost absorbs a tremendous amount of water, okay? So let me explain to you what I'm talking about. When we no-till, we no-till with our bodies and our brains, okay? We're not out here with machinery telling the earth, then throwing in the seeds, and then just dumping water. We want to sustainable form. But if you do not use a deep mulch on top of your compost, your manure, your worm castings, it absorbs a tremendous amount of water and then it dries out very, very quickly. Okay? So that can be a real problem. So as soon as that garlic sends that green shoot out of the top, Stephen and I will come back out here and quickly cover up all these areas with this deep hay. And we have to do that so that we can continue to sustainably form because we rarely, if ever, turn on our actual drip lines out here. We try to make sure that our garden is in a position that when it rains, it can grab onto that rain, slow it down, let it absorb into the soil, and then continue to give our plants water for a week, a two weeks, three weeks with no more rain. And obviously, we've done a great job because everything is green and luscious. And we rarely turn on the water. It hasn't rained in Louisiana now for almost three weeks. We finally came out here the day and turned on the drip line. And then we laughed because the drip line had clogged up on this end because we're well water. We had to clean the, the pump out and everything. And we noticed that we gave the garden a little bit of water just to, because three weeks is a long time for no water in South Louisiana. So I hope this helps. My husband's now gonna demonstrate how to get that garlic into the ground, how far to go down with it. I hope you guys continue to watch. Please like, comment, and subscribe. All right, that end down. Pointy end up. Which the end? Completely cover. Covered the first one. Second one. Same thing. And I lift the little green sprout up. God bless you, Hammer. All right. 
And that's that. Break up the dirt. Little piece of clay. There you go. That's the first set. And for any of you watching, um, our compost is our fertilizer. Yes. Because it's what? Quail, chicken, and rabbit manure and rabbit urine. Yeah. Along with rotted down vegetables, uh, grass clippings from our yard, leaves from our yard, organic hay that the rabbits eat that falls back through the cages. So that is how we make our fertilizer. We side dress with it. We transplant in it as well as seed our plants. I will do side dressings of vermicompost, which is worm castings that we also make here at Starkey Farmstead before I cover it back up with the hay. Once they all start with the green shoots coming out of the top, I will add the worm castings and then cover it up real well so that the hay will keep any kind of grass breakthrough and it will retain moisture. The biggest thing that Stephen and I really want to impart to you guys is don't give up. When you're watching somebody else on their journey with no-till, remember what I said. We all started in different places. We all started at different times. We all have different weather. We all have different soil and we all have different tools and mechanisms to work with so the biggest thing i'd like for you to take from watching this video today is just to remember the more you can get into the soil to grow the healthier the soil will be so the more you can keep living roots down in your soil the more the water will percolate through the more earthworms and other nematodes and things like that will move in the healthier the soil will become and guys, it's all about soil health. The healthier the soil, the healthier the plant, the healthier the food that that plant grows for you, your family, and your community. So don't give up. You can do this. We are six months into our no-till journey. And before we go, I wanna show you guys really quick. I came up here to put some cabbage seed into the ground because here's a hint and a bonus for all of you that have watched this for. If you plant your cabbage between your tomatoes, you will help to tear cabbage worm. That's your tip for the day from Starkey Farmstead. So let me come down here and let me show you what it's gonna look like in the soil up here where things have been growing now since May 1st when we first transplanted our very first tomatoes into this no-till. I'm gonna show you how tremendously different the soil is right here than where you saw us putting the garlic bulbs because there's nothing has grown there, guys. That hay was put down. It was the compost, the vermi compost. I aerated with the broad fork. We laid the hay, we tarped it, and we left it alone for a couple of months until we could get to it. So now we're putting in the garlic down there and you can still see how tight and how hard and how dry that soil is. Let me show you the difference in an area that Again, was broad forked, vermi compost, compost, some rabbit manure, covered with hay, but lots of different things have been growing here for six months. The soil is tremendous, and I'm super excited to show you guys what you can do wherever you're at in whatever situation you're in in six months. I'm gonna show you the difference of what your soil can and will look right, like. So here's a tomato plant, and there's a tomato plant. Now what I'm gonna do, guys, move back. The little bit of hay that's left, most of it has broken down into a wonderful compost. Look at this. Look at this, y'all. This was the same clay you saw my husband putting the drill in earlier. You can still tell it's clay because it still wants to ribbon when you press it up, but it's so full of organic matter. It has had stuff growing in it now for six months. It's been covered for six months. It's had living plants in it. Look at that. Look at the difference. Look at the color of that compared to that dry, dusty clay that my husband showed you guys earlier. So that's impressive. See, I don't even need the drill up here. I can just kind of break this up with my hand, right? Come back over here. Grab me a little compost from the chicken coop. Please watch that video. It's very interesting. You can make your compost in your chicken coop. I'm going to sprinkle that right here. And guys, look, I'm going to just take my teeny tiny cabbage seeds. I am going to plant three. I'm old-fashioned. My dad's 81. You know, Papa see me in alley bug. 
I'll put a seed there, there, and there. Cover it back. Drop this drip hose right like that. Let it slow drip in there. And I'm going to go on about my business. Whichever cabbage plant comes up first and is the healthiest is the one that I will leave. And I will put a cabbage on each side of my tomatoes. That is called companion planting. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope it was informative. You've got everything that you need to continue doing it. Thank you guys for watching Starkey Farmstead. Like and subscribe.